recently needed to replace one of my studio strobes that died rather suddenly. And I found a new to me strobe that has way more features. Um, it, it has way more features than the old strobe and it's extremely budget friendly. There are two versions of this flash that are available. One is the Flashpoint 400, which is the one I have here. This is the same flash as the Godox SK400 II. It's just branded differently. Let's have a closer look at it. Okay, first I'm gonna finish setting up the strobe and we're gonna go over the features, do a demo, of how it works, how I trigger it, which might be pretty interesting to you, especially beginners. There's a couple of ways you can trigger this, really interesting information. After that, I'm going to go over three reasons I think this may be the perfect first studio strobe flash for a beginner or a photographer getting into flash. Okay, let's see what we have here. This is not my first rodeo with Flashpoint Godox. So I'm not seeing anything incredibly different from what I'm used to. The design of the cover is a little different here. And that reveals the strobe. The modeling bulb is here that will then screw in there. Okay, so look at, let's look at this. All right, so on the back we have all the controls, uh, electronic controls, but what I'm looking at first, before I even plug it in, is how to interface my triggers. Now, currently, I have two trigger systems. I have the, the uh, R2 trigger system, but in my studio, I'm still using, um, I'm still using pocket wizards. I'm gonna need um, one eighth to one eight, so they'll plug up like this into flash. So why did I get this particular kit if I'm not using the R2 triggers? So I can have it both ways and gradually migrate my studio to the R2 triggers. For now, I need it to integrate with this and I need it to do R2 if I'm using it solo. I want to move everything to R2 because you can control everything from camera position. That is a huge win um, over the pocket wizard system. Let's get it up on a light stand, hook it up and see what we've got. The cable is actually much thicker cable than in past flash points. Again, we've got a win there for sure. Although, <laughs> Loosening it up for use in the studio is a different point, but heavier cable's good. Let's see what we got here. All right. We've got power. We've got a ready beep. We have flash. Okay, so I've turned the flash head so we can look at the back. I have hung my pocket wizard here next to the flash. So. First thing I need to do is see if this is going to work with my studio system. <laughs> I hope it does. I don't know what the plan is if it doesn't, but I'm gonna hook in the pocket wizard here to the sink. Okay, let me turn on the pocket wizard and we have good sync. Pocket wizard system working just fine. After a quick peek in the manual, we're going to now set the group and channel according to my R2 trigger settings. I work on group A, channel 13. So I'm going to hit the group, rotate what is the power button normally, but for this, it becomes the set button and press in on it to set it. Now I'm gonna push and hold on the channel and you see the channel flashing. I'm gonna to rotate to channel 13. 
So now we'll get the R2 trigger and see what we've got. And as you can see, both, both of the numbers are reflective of the power being set. I can rotate and we're actually getting good communication between the two. Triggering it works great. Uh, group A, channel 13, group A, channel 13, and even setting the power with this trigger, I can now still use this trigger to trigger. So even if I'm not fully integrated in the system, let's kick it up to full power, top one, whoa, that was definitely full power. I can still use both triggers, even if I'm not fully integrated. That's a win. Okay, there you go. That's the basic setup, the basics of how it works. Obviously, that was just an initial test, not using it for flash photography. That'll probably be a later video. Let me know if you do want to see that. One of my specialties is flash. I'm big on flash. I really think flash is important for photographers at any level. So I will probably use this flash in future videos to demonstrate some techniques. Moving on to the three reasons I think this is or this may be the perfect first flash for someone getting into studio photography. Well, first, reason number one is huge, is price. This flash goes for $125. I have not seen a flash at that price point that has 400 watt seconds of power, an internal triggering system, and is compatible with a industry standard Bowen's mount. For $125? That makes it kind of a no-brainer and you really should look at it. Okay, second reason that this is an absolutely wonderful flash for a beginner or someone getting into flash is, as I've already said, flexibility. You've got an internal trigger system. It can be triggered externally by old style, like pocket wizards, like I showed. And third, it's got an industry standard mount for modifiers, a Bowen system. Bowen system's pretty ubiquitous. You find them in lots of places. And once you start getting into flash, modifiers are real important and flexibility is your friend. Okay, reason number three, this thing recycles pretty darn fast. Certainly faster than the old flash points. I have not measured this, okay? I am not an equipment tester. I am a professional photographer, as I've said over and over many times in my videos. I go by my experience using it and what it does for me. This thing, this thing recycles pretty fast, okay? And that's really important, um, especially at this price point. You can get strobes that recycled as fast as you can press the button. No problem. Just spend another couple of thousand and you can have that. Okay, right? There's a, part, there's a place for that. We're talking first flash. We're talking beginners. We're talking budget. Okay, and related to recycle speed, I, I can hear some of you asking, well, what about color temperature? Yeah, that matters. The, the, the faster something recycles, yeah, color temperature becomes a thing. Um, I, I don't have a color temperature meter. I, as I said at the beginning of this video, I've been working with Flashpoint for a long time because they are incredible value for the price. So instead of worrying about if the color temperature is staying steady, I set my power for my exposure and then I white balance, right? Old school, right? <laughs> you don't, uh, you don't have, I mean, there are times when for high-end use, like commercial photographers who are running the power up and down, run and gun, things are changing fast, bang, 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 you gotta have that color temperature perfect. This is not what we're talking about in this video, that we're talking about a $125 flash for a beginner or someone just getting into it or someone who doesn't need all those high-end specs. I don't need all those high-end specs. I need a flash that's gonna be with me five or six years. And this is definitely it. It's well-made. It's, it's made, of, most components are made of metal on it. For the price, it is a darn good value. So if you are just starting out in a studio strobe system, starting with a flash like this with a built-in R2 trigger, throw in the trigger for your camera, and you have got a start to a wonderful system. I have already reviewed the uh, 8200 
AD200, not 8200. That is a location flash that I use that also is triggered by the R2. I'll link that video. Two strobes and a trigger, I think you'll come in under $700. You've got the start of a great system. Hey, if this video has been valuable to you, I hope it has. I'm always open to questions as always. If you'd consider a like and a subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing. I hope this works for you. I hope this, you got something out of this video. Until the next video, cheers.